Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to check something fresh from ICM. That's 148 scale plastic which copies Henkel 111 but this time it's H20 version of the German bomber. And this is a commercial sample so it means you will get exactly the same kit if you get it from any good model shop. For example Modelimax should have those for sure. And this time we have a chance to open this box and take a look inside. So first of all we have here a quite nice box art I would say. As you can see this German bomber is bombing some airfield and also we have some dust on the box but here you can see comparison with my hand it is quite big box and it is also quite thick. Here you can see also some information about the kit as well as history notes so there are 355 parts and wingspan of the assembled model will be equal to 471 millimeters which is quite impressive even this scale and here from the other side you can see the same marking option which we have on the box art but obviously there will be more and we'll check it in a second so first of all we have to open this box and as usual with those uh, tall boxes from ICM it's a bit tight fit because as you remember we have this cover printed top section and I'm not sure how to lift it uh, fast so just give me a second as you can see it's really tight fit and I hope that it will be solved in the next releases because as far as I know everybody is aware of this problem so let's see how it will be solved on the next releases because as you can see that's not funny to open the box like this moreover you risk damaging your parts by rotating the box like this but let's Mm -mm. No, it doesn't go higher. That's really shame, I would say. But now we have it removed. Okay, so here we have this white plastic cardboard box. We also have this flexible part which we were trying to remove. As you can see, it is really thin. And frankly speaking, I think on the big box it is easier just to make some cover here on the white box and it will be um, better looking and easier to open. So let's open it. Here we have all plastic parts inside. As you can see, they are separated into several plastic bags. They are also um, wrapped with this rubber band. And also on the bottom of the box we have assembly manual together with decals sheet. But we will check it a bit later. I would like to start with plastic parts. So first of all we remove this rubber band. It is quite huge. But no problem. Then surprisingly we get uh, parts in two plastic bags, not in one. So at least there is some chance that everything will arrive to you intact. But I think it's also connected with the version of this aircraft because it requires some new parts. And that's why these new parts were separated into the separate plastic bag. And now we are going to start with plastic sprue. So first of all we have here the grey plastic sprue. Here it is. Let's zoom in. Those are wing parts. As you can see flaps are pre-molded so you won't be able to drop them on your aircraft. We also have recessed panel lines and also quite thin attachment points even though they are placed on the leading edges. Here we have some tail wing parts and those tail wing parts should be glued out of two halves as well and the same can be said about rudder as you can see there are two halves. Inside we have some guiding pins so those two halves will be easy to combine due to such design and that's really great because size of the parts is quite big and it might be tricky to do it without any guiding pins. Then here we have next plastic sprue. This one comes with various thin parts. Let's zoom in. Uh, so here we have main landing gear OX and also some engine parts and some minor um, thin parts for the cockpit and for wheel wells detailing. So as you can see they are really thin and you will have to be careful while working with this. I will focus the camera in a second so that you can see for example those parts in detail. Even though this is a 148 scale, still they're very thin as I said before. 
so be careful while working with them. Next we have another plastic sprue, here we have the flame covers for the exhaust, machine guns, this new top cover for the fuselage and let's flip it over inside there is nothing interesting note that exhaust covers um, have special rised elements which will help you with uh, proper assembly so here you can see them let's focus the camera now we should be able to see it and here it is okay next we have another plastic sprue i guess that's the same absolutely identical plastic parts just let me check the letter yeah it is also aged sprue, so we get exactly the same set of parts and there is no need to waste time trying to check what is there. Here we have first separate plastic bag and obviously it is dedicated to clear plastic parts. Here you can see it. Great molding quality, but masks are not included so you have to cut them with your own hands or um, buy some aftermarket set because otherwise it will be a bit tricky to mask, for example those surfaces but molding quality looks really great i don't have any complaints here and i think on the final model it will look even better after some careful painting next we have another gray plastic sprue and again huge wing ports so let's place it like this we refocus the camera and we zoom out a bit here you can see two wing halves also we have separately molded ailerons and what else actually those are elevators and here we have ailerons as well as here and as i said before flaps are molded in and here for example i can show the external detailing so that you understand what i'm talking about here you can see all those recessed panel lines and riveting it looks really good and i think after you know, pre-shading and also some washings it will look even better then here we have another separate plastic bag and again another transparent plastic sprue here you can see it let's refocus the camera back to this part now you should be able to see it so again great molding quality I don't have any complaints about those parts and again we will need masks for those parts because it will be a bit crazy um, job to do to mask all those parts one by one but who knows maybe some others will do it and we will be pleased with the result. Another plastic bag, another clear plastic sprue. Here we have um, a lot of parts, but many of them won't be used because for this H20 version, I guess we will use the first clear, clear sprue we saw before. But again, the same level of molding, so nothing to complain about. Next, we have another plastic bag. This one, I guess, carries uh, standard, let's say, plastic parts. As far as you can see, there are mostly gray plastic screws. So just give me a second, we'll check them one by one. So first of all, we have here a pair of absolutely identical plastic frames. It can be explained because here we have various parts for engine gondolas and landing gears. So that's why we will check only one out of those because there is no point to show the same parts again and again. The main feature of the Heinkel 111 kit from ICM is that we have engines in both engine gondolas. So it won't be like, yeah, choose one and the second one will be closed. You can open both engines and it will be up to you if you would like to do it on your model. But it's really good to have such nice bonus. Some fighter kits in 148 scale don't have full engine detailing and here we have bomber with full engine detailing. Then here we have, uh, as far as I can guess, another H20 specific sprue. Why? Because here we have new landing gear wheels as well as new propeller. Again, propeller is attached on two attachment points which are placed in the center so you won't damage the blades. And I can bring closer the landing gear wheels. They look quite good, but you have to glue them out of two halves. And another thing is that we don't have any writings on the tires. I guess it is the right time to start implementing such detailing as well. As you can see inside we have some guiding elements, so it should be quite easy to combine those two halves together. Next we have another plastic sprue, it's the same, the same set of parts. Okay. 
Next we have one more here. So this one is notable because here we have huge wing spars. You can notice them on the on both sides of this frame. They will be useful in order to hold wings in place, obviously, and otherwise it won't be possible because wings are huge, as you remember. And again, we also have here some various hatches, so cockpit four, etc., etc. And inside, again, those parts which are divided into two halves, they have guiding pins, so it will be quite easy to work with them. Note also this. We have here a tail landing gear wheel, which is molded together with landing gear leg, but quite interesting thing is that we don't have one half of the wheel, so we will have to glue it separately. And it can be found here. It is quite surprising, I am not sure why, you know, what actually... Let's say limited the modern technology so that it had to be separated like this, but we have it like this. Then here we have um, fuselage halves. Both fuselage halves are molded together with tail segment. Uh, no section obviously will have to be assembled separately. The same can be said about the belly of this aircraft. And overall, external detailing uh, mimics what we saw on the wing parts, so it means recess panel lines and riveting. And inside we have guiding pins again, some moderate interior detailing, which can be enhanced with help of your skills, obviously, especially painting skills. So here you can see it. Here you can see also some guiding elements, so those guiding pins. Let's flip it over. Here you can see recess panel lines and riveting. Note that uh, some antennas are promoted, so you have to be careful while working with this. Here you can see some of the interior parts, but those thin antennas, they will definitely require some attention because otherwise it is easy to break them. And here we have another gray plastic sprue. This is actually the last one. So here we have again belly plates, some of the top fuselage covers, bombs, machine guns, and some other minor elements for fine detailing. Again, molding quality is really great. I don't see any problematic spot here. So we can move to assembly manual. And assembly manual is printed in typical ICM style. So there is a short history note in Russian and English, technical specifications, space chart. But I would like to open it because inside we have also decal sheet. So as you can see, decal sheet is printed in form of this now white paper let's say here we have all necessary symbols and also we have some decals for the cockpit and dashboards or instrument panels as some of you prefer we also have some stencils and overall printing quality is really nice there is no mention where it was printed but it looks good and I hope it will be easy to work with and next we are going to open this assembly manual and check what is printed inside so let's open it here we have parts map so note that many parts won't be used, as I said, this old type of landing gear wheels won't be used in this new version. The same can be said about propeller, about those panels, and also those panels, belly panels. Next, we have also several plastic frames here. And again, some parts won't be used on transparent sprues, on gray plastic sprues, so keep in mind um, that you have to use the right one. Here we start with cockpit, obviously, or with interior, uh, and also we assemble together those wing spars. Then we continue with other cockpit parts, for example, we can assemble this machine gunner turret, um, landing gear wheels, as far as you can see here. And note that here we will use the version with separate landing gear wheel, so it means you can replace it with resin part if you find one. Then here we continue with machine guns, which are installed in the fuselage, clear parts, various internal equipment, uh, control columns, pilot seat, rudder, and then we continue with landing gear wheel wells. We close the belly of the aircraft, we install lower wing halves, then we continue with tail wings. Engine assembly starts here. And for engine assembly, you can get some aftermarket sets because it can be enhanced with P parts, obviously. So it will be up to you if you would like to invest in this area. Then here we continue with air intakes, engine cooling parts, top wing halves, separate ailerons. Then we install the engine cooling panels. 
and we continue with those uh, flame covers for the exhaust then we assemble the nose section it should be glued out of several parts as you remember now uh, then there is a turn of the main landing gear wheel um, assembly so it, as you can see it should be glued out of several parts and it might be tricky due to the overall structure I would say. Here we installed the special installation brackets for the bombs. Next we continue with winding gear doors, special turret on the top of the aircraft and of course propellers. So in total you have to perform 111 steps in order to get this aircraft done. Then we have the stencil placement guide and here we have two first two marking options. So this one comes from 1944 Ecdo 16. This one comes from um, Crimea December 1943, quite surprising. Here we have third marking option. This one is from Poland June 22, 1944. Here we have also another aircraft which comes from Berlin Gatov airfield it's april 1945 one of the latest aircrafts included here so in my opinion this is a really huge build if you would like to assemble it so you should be definitely uh, let's say separating or ticking out in your calendar several weeks not days and also this aircraft will be we look good in the finished state. There is a huge choice of aftermarket upgrades, so I think it will be interesting for professionals, for beginners. I'm not sure that they will be engaged with such build because it might be tricky in some areas. So first think thoroughly because otherwise you might end up with not that pleasing experience. And of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit here in the comment section below. If you would like to support us, go to our website, press the donate button and choose the amount you would like to donate us. It will help us greatly because we need new photo and video equipment. And of course, don't forget to press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Bye.